Here is another amazing episode of Nothing But The Truth from Marvin Herbert. And today we've got none other than another totally reformed individual that came from the deepest, darkest holes of society, just like myself, yeah? Just like myself. And Freddy Krueger, the man from South, in the building, Pleasure to have you in. Reformed, Come reformed on, brother. Brother. beyond belief, yeah? Reformed beyond belief, yeah? <laughs> Award-winning, yeah? Celebrity, movie, TV, fucking media, everything. So this is the one, yeah? Stay tuned for this one. It's going to blow your mind because Freddie's done the business and Freddie's got opportunities for all of you lot in, for, who wants to get involved in the music and the media, and all the movies and media, yeah? Music is there. Contact Chris at so much front.com with any ideas you've got, any projects you've got, and we'll put it into place and we'll put the infrastructure behind that to generate the business for you. Because this is what we do we generate business for you, yeah, and we take a small percentage of the business, add revenue, add investment, add network so you can grow, yeah. So 90% is yours, 10% is Marvin Herbert's limited, and we'll help you do whatever you want to do. So, message, do what you're doing, and we'll crack on. Love that. So today, we're going to cover Freddie's journey, ups and downs, round and rants, and now the outcome. For me, it's mad. I mean, so I've got my book coming out um, next year called Boy, um, and it's my story, basically. I was fostered from when I was three months old um, in a place called Deal. I was the only black person in the whole town. Damn. You see, like on um, uh, Little Britain, the only yeah. gay in the village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the only black boy in the village. Yeah, and they used to scratch my skin and see if it would come off. They used to tie me to trees. I used to get the mad fucking racism shit going down there. So when I hear people say, no, oh, you're racist or racist. No, I can show you what real racism is. Not that, oh, I didn't get a job today or someone gave me a bad look. I'm talking about where they used to come up to me. There's one time I was walking on the high street and the skinheads were going like this to me and I thought they was waving. So I'm there waving back. I didn't know, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what they were doing. I thought it's fucking saying hello, you know what I mean? Sea Highland all that. Yeah, so then, um, I came to London um, when I was probably about nine, ten, um, and then moved properly when I was 13. And I remember at that time then, black people didn't like me because I was into fucking Ultra Vox, Duran Duran, Dexys, Midnight Runners, doing that fucking dance oh, yeah, car yeah. and Arlene and all that shit. So white people, black people didn't like me. White people didn't like me because I was black. That time was mad racism going on. So, so I, where did you move into? I, moved, I came from um, Deal and I came straight to Chelsea. In the okay. world's in the state. Well, wow. Yeah, so I was there, but my dad was in between there and Brixton, Angel Town. So, wow. so it was a bit of both. And I was that youth that basically I was skinny, fucking, no one didn't like me. So during break times, I used to be in the corners playing with insects. Like, you didn't got no friends. I'm playing with beetles and spiders and shit like that because no one just didn't want to, I didn't have no friends. Okay. And then I remember um, going to one, some of these park events and seeing the, the guys emceeing and everyone going mad. And I was like, raw, like this guy's like, he's got friends. So I taught myself how to get into an MC and I started MCing, clashing bear MCs and rare, rare, this and rare, rare, that. <laughs> then my foster parents, one of my foster parents, a bit before that, my foster parents died. One of them died and I'll never forget, I went to school and there's a guy sitting opposite me and he started laughing at me when I was crying. And I went fucking mad. I picked up the table, threw the table and I beat this brother, I fucking beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. And consequently, as a result of that whole thing, a little bit later, the guy passed away from that thing. He had an asthma attack or something like that to him. So when them things happen, you go one of two ways. You either go really, really strong, like don't give a fuck about nothing, or you go really withdrawn. And for me, I went the wrong way. I went more strong, because now I've got people liking me, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah, and I started yeah, yeah. doing door work. I started doing um, fucking joining gangs, a bit of enforcement work, and all kinds of shit. But everything that was just negative, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I kind of found myself spiraling out of control. Then I joined the Untouchables and we were running around South doing the whole Untouchable thing in the South side of things. And then bodyguarding, door work, fucking every kinds of shit. I looked after Biggie Small for a while when he was alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked after Donald Jones, TLC, um, so many acts, man. Do you know what I mean? And it just kind of spiraled on from then. And then my son, like I said, when my son was born, for me, that was the, the moment where I realised that if I don't change my life, around i'm not going to see him grow like i counted 45 of my friends dead bro so that that was that 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 realization would do you put that down to going through the foster care system 
and you don't want to let your kids down in that way or capacity. Because when I had a child, right, and I've mentioned it earlier, when my boy was born, I just knew he was never going to go hungry, he was never going to yeah. starve, and he was never going to. But I never give up crime because. I thought that was the answer, and I, I thought as long as they've got money and I'm in prison, it don't matter. So, because I could always make money in prison, I've done that. Like, God forgive me for the choices I made, and I can't make it out with my son. We're still not talking properly today, but I believe that them having food, Christmas was dinners, enough. was enough for them yeah. to love me, and it just never built the when, right relationship. When I was in care, I went through child abuse and all kinds of shit, and it wasn't until I was 40 that I was even, like, I, I blocked it all out, like it didn't exist. Like, mm. I didn't even, it's like, I knew I'd been abused, but I didn't even realise I'd been abused. If that made sense, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. old enough to look back on it and say, well, fucking hell. They fucked me up. They fucked me up. Yeah. And then, so then some of the choices that I've made through life, not my fault. I was an angry kid, yeah. trying to fit in, following the wrong people, just to be accepted. Exactly the same thing that I've done. I come to London as a scarce, I tried to fit in, got accepted, because obviously the blacks didn't like me because I was mixed race, and the whites didn't like me because I was black. So I had to fit in. Right, so it's a similar. Yeah, so, 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 that's, that's what, when I told so much people, similarities. Very similarities, man. Yeah. Very, very similar. And it makes you. It, 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 it builds for a force that is fucking horrible. Because yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. is you don't care about nothing. Nothing, yeah. And anything that gets in your way is it's either you're with me or you're against me. And that's that's what, sad. And, and isn't it was like that for a long time. And then when my son was born, it was a chance for me to, to love somebody in a way that I wasn't loved. Do you know what I'm saying? Like me, and my mum didn't get on. Me, and my dad didn't get on. Really, like I was, yeah. When my son was born, I had my own to show love to. Do you know what I mean? And I just wanted to be there for him. And to be fair, at that same point, my music career kicked off. I was in and out of America rapping. Like I said, I got signed to Wu Tang, and like I'm the only British artist ever signed to Wu Tang. So I, got, so I was doing that. Then I came back, and I was I supported DMX. I supported bare artists around the world. DMX, rest in peace. Rest everyone, in you know peace. What I mean? yeah. So I've done a lot, and to come from. That's why I love your journey, bro. And that's why I keep on saying and I sing your praises because when I see what you've done and what you've achieved and where you are now, with that saying, real recognise, real, I see. Do you know what I mean? And you, you've inspired me mm. to do better. People cannot make... You can't make excuses when you see people that have been through worse than you and haven't given up. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So your journey is instrumental in all the L's that you've taken in your life have probably saved a lot more. Lives. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Like, like, just so you know out there, yeah, I've never had, Marvin Herbert has never had a personal drama with anybody, yeah, where I've had to feel, to shoot or stab or do them. Every bit of violence I've ever been involved in is because of helping someone else who's either being bullied or terrorised or persecuted. And that's a fact, right? Personally, all I've done is built good relationships with a hell of a lot of people. Hence the reason why my network is pretty strong now. Mm. But I'm known not to fuck about with if I've made a certain choice. Mm. Like people say, oh, Marv's on, oh, do you know what? I ain't getting involved. Mm. Fuck that, if it's Marv, I ain't getting involved. Like, it happens because people don't want to have what's coming. Mm. Because people that know me know that I've got no fear. I had no fear. I mean, I've, I'm still not scared of anything now, but I'm not scared for the right reasons now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, if anything happens to me, it happens because it's meant to happen. I'm not scared. I know I'm not going to come out my ass and have an argument with someone, so I'm going to pull out a knife and stab it. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean, I know I'm not going to get into a fight. I know these things ain't going to happen to me no more because I'm not of that in, mindset. In that. Yeah, yeah. No, if someone starts screaming and shouting at me, I'll just look at my feet. Do you know what, bro? I ain't going back to prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see yeah, you later, yeah. mate. Yeah, I'll yeah. carry on walking. Yeah, you're a pussy. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, 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 y
But what I spent in prison traumatised me, traumatised my children, traumatised my mum, traumatised my cousins, traumatised my dad, traumatised my um, nieces and nephews. So and for what? Is due. Yeah, for what? Yeah. For what? So everybody could pat me on my back and tell me I'm the man, tell me I'm sensible. How? How does that make you sensible? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I've woke up and I hope that we're doing enough to make you wake up. It's like you and I, we never, we was most probably in the same company, certain places, certain times and certain environments, but we never linked. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? We never made a relationship to mm. go earning or to mm. do anything together. Do you know what I mean? Although your people and my people was interactive with each other and doing things, we was just, we never made that connection for a yeah, reason. It's in the fringe. Do you know what I mean? It's like even, yeah. even, even like rest his soul, Sky, mm. yeah? If Sky was about today, like, I don't know what he would have become. Do you know what I'm saying? But he was a, he was a, he was a driving force of nature. Like he was just different. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And he yeah. really was a different individual. Like yeah. he was a fucking giant for one. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like 14 it's, years old, six foot six. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck? I remember I remember at being at Rosebridge and, and him and Lawrence were fucking giants. Yeah. And they were like they, they were like them, them, them builders in America. Twin towers. Twin towers. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, both of yeah. them just and we were young and I remember seeing these tall guys speaking. And the thing is, they used to dance. Like, you can't be that fucking tall and dancing. Dance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know when you stand out, and it's, I remember his hair used to be like, um, Sick. slicked back and he yeah. was dancing. Like, bro, you can't be that tall and, and always, dancing. And what I love about it, he always looks slick. Yeah. Always looks always. slick. Rest in peace. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Rose my brother. Peace, yeah, come on, we was all, all that whole, the, the whole unit, man. And we just made the wrong choices with mm. the wrong products at the wrong time. That it's was all. Mad because back then, I was, it's so mad. Because now I think about it, like, I was warring with some of their, them lots of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was going back and forth. But that's what I'm saying. Like, so it, long. But, but me and George and me and Sky were so cool. It's like, I feel like the relationships that I had with some people probably saved my life. Yeah, standard. Yeah. Same here, same thing. Because it's only because me and that one was cool. Or again, me, me and Tats were cool. Otherwise, certain beefs I'm having with certain man. And it's only, and now that how many years later, I'm getting the whole stories. And I'm thinking to myself, raw. So I remember when that happened, but you was there and you squashed this and you, squashed, but I didn't know you then. Mm. You know one's there, like it's just real recognizing real again, isn't it? And everyone doing the right thing for the right reason, you know. And people doing things because they're real. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And not letting things escalate. Like, mm. There's there's always been that level of control, but always that underlining factor with the wrong product. So they always have to like. Look, I never believed till 2015, yeah, that I'd be legitimate. Mm. I never believed it. I never believed it. I never believed I was going legit. And that's the fact. I never believed I was going legit until mm. 2015, till the day I thought, you know what? I'm killing youngsters. Mm. I'm putting youngsters in prison. I'm supposed to be helping these kids. What mm. the fuck are you doing? Mm. And then I thought, you know, I can't do it no more. And I can't do it no more. And I walked away from all my products. I walked away from all my money. And I walked away from all my debt. And I entered this world skin. Mm. Now, it was scary. And I was tempted at times. But then I've looked at my two daughters who I got in boarding school. I just thought, I can't. Embarrass them. See? I can't embarrass them. I can't. And it wasn't until my younger kids that I realised what my older kids had to endure and live with. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, for me, when my son was born, um, young Kruger, like when he was born, for me, he was the reason that got me out of everything. You know, when you, when you, when you hold a child and you realise that, you know what, you might not even be around to see this grow. Like, it was just that, 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 that one second that made me think, wow, you know what, if anything happens to me now, he's not going to have a dad. No, no. And you know, they say, no, how mad my mindset was. It's how mad my mindset was. It didn't matter to me. Mm. All that mattered to me was that, that they had the money. Mm. So if I died, but they've got a few million quid, I'm a good dad. Yeah. Because I remember not having anything as a kid sometimes, like no food, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like no food in my cupboard for days, no dinner on a plate for days, like hungry, like. It's hurting. Yeah, you got to sit like, uh, there's certain people in Kentish Town <coughs> that used to go around their house, they used to feed me. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't remember, like, I've got really close friends, like, I'm really close with their parents now because of the empathy they had for me as a child and the things I had to endure. So I would never want my kids to go through that. So mm. that was what was important to me growing up, my kids having money and food. Mm. Me, I wasn't important because I lived without my dad, so I knew I could do it. So living without food, I don't want my kids to go out for Christmas present, I didn't want to go out for birthday present, I didn't want to go without food. So them three things was my main priority that my kids had, whether I was in prison or not. And because when I went to prison, 
I could st stiff things up my ass and make money. Mm. That's what I've done. So going to prison wasn't a fear for me because I can make money and send it to the kids. Mm. As long as my kids are getting £500 on their birthday and a £1,000 Christmas and whatever they needed throughout the year and a couple of holidays, I was a good dad. And that was what I created from prison. And that was my comfort cushion to get through all that bullshit. Although it was all wrong, that was my way of dealing with all the trauma. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But my kids, my older kids, I haven't got a relationship I'd love to have with them now because of the behavior that I sort of demonstrated growing up. My youngest two kids, one of them thinks I'm God. <laughs> and the other, one, the other one just, she's just like, well, why do I need to listen to you? You've made too many mistakes. Mm. Like, what can you teach me? Like, mm. really, come on, Dad, you're 50 years of age, you spent 42 years of your life being a criminal, and now you want to tell me what to do. What, 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 when you're, what, um, so you're 50 as well? I'm 50 next January, yeah. Okay, I'm older than you, I just turned 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you're the old man, the old man. You're the old man of the group, yeah, like. Like, yeah, sick, though, yeah. isn't it? And you know, to think, right, at 16, 17, 18 years of age, 50 was an old man we didn't want to be. I didn't think I was even going to get to this age. I didn't think I would get past 30. No, I didn't think this age. Even my teacher said, you know, you ain't going to pass 25. Mm. And I was like, huh? And, and I actually believed it. And I did, it's mad because I wasn't even scared. Like, I didn't, you know, you know like, it's like, whatever, innit? And now that I'm 50 and I look back, I think to myself, wow, like. Wow. And always up until all them times, I was like, why well, do I want to live till 54? Yeah, that's old. That's an old, <laughs> bruv. I don't want to get old. <laughs> so, I mean, fuck that. I want to live my life and give my kids everything and die young, bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, I was, I was prepared to go out on my shield, prepared to go out on my sword, prepared to run into a, a, a hail of bullets from armed old Bill. Like, that was, that, that was my world, isn't it? So, and this is why we got to get these youngsters now focused on the stuff that we're focused on now, so they don't have to go or endure or well, fucking sacrifice. Well, this is the thing. At the end of the day, they got to learn. For me, people like yourself, myself, and other people, we're not supposed to have gone through all the shit and experienced all the stuff that we've experienced if we can't teach and they can't learn. Well, I believe we've all gone through it, Fred, so we are here doing we're what here we're doing because look, there ain't no one from Brixton, there ain't no one from South London that can say to you, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. There ain't no one mm. off the road that can say, you ain't been lived there, you ain't lived that life, you can't tell me, what do you know? There ain't no one that can say that to you. Mm. There ain't no one that can say that from the road because they haven't even gone through what we've dealt with for fun. Come on. Do you understand? Yeah, back yeah, in the, do you understand, yeah, Sanchez? Yeah, Things we've done for excitement back in the yeah, day, these yeah, kids yeah. wouldn't even dream about yeah, doing that. Yeah, yeah. My son, yeah, my, my son said, Dad, my, dad, my son asked me sometimes, is it worse now or worse then? And I keep trying to explain to him, like, don't get it twisted. The reason why it's like this now is it's publicised. Everyone got mobile phones. Everyone got this to show everything. But when we was coming up, man was getting their head lick off weekly, regular, weekly, in, weekly, weekly. In clubs, restaurants, yeah. food places, and no one could document it. Yeah. If police didn't get there within like <laughs> two minutes, no one saw nothing. Yeah. Now, before the police get there, it's everyone on the net. Yeah. So I'm saying to my son, it's not that it's worse now, because everyone's saying, oh, these youths, these youths, these youths. But I know <laughs> what I saw and what I grew up amongst. So. It ain't much worse now than it used to be. It's just documented more now because yeah, yeah, of social media. Yeah, it's Everyone just out there out easier. There, yeah. Like you can serve someone up in Birmingham, yeah, and by six o'clock in the evening, everyone in the whole country knows this yeah, happened. Yeah, everyone knows. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? And that's knows. the problem. It's my. That's it's the like, problem. And I think there's a lot of these. Users, uh, they, they, I mean, they're stitching on themselves. Yeah. Like all the social media social and media the videos. Too. It's ridiculous. Like nah. it's this nuts. Like I find out about shit that's going on that I don't even want to find out about. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like one of my son, um, one of my fr good friends' son got killed the other day, and Think my daughter, I don't know. Yeah, for real. My daughter, I don't even know. These people showed me um, um, a clip that was going around on social media on, a, on, on Snapchat of them. They, they were they were filming the you as he was getting stabbed on the floor. What kind of mad thing is that? Filming the you, killing the you, and put it on Snap for people Some to see. Some And uh, when you think about it, though, back in our day, yeah. We would have stopped that happening. Mm. You'd be like, yo, what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't fucking stab him, man. What's the matter with you? For what? What are you doing that for? Nah, allow him, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was always, it was kind of weird when I was growing up because everyone was right. No one really wanted to hurt anybody. And it was only if someone took an absolute liberty. fucking liberty yeah. that something bad happened. And, and then it just got, like, the liberties just sort of got 
smaller and smaller. It's just, even like today, like, it's not that the kids are worse. It's just they react over the silliest of things. There's no thought process behind what they do. And there's no seriousness in what they do. There's no thought behind what they do. Whereas when we were growing up, everything was prepared, planned, and executed. And also, and also, we had a level of respect for those that came before us and olders. Like yeah. I remember. Like, man would be like, for argument's sake, right now, man, that's Marv's people. Yeah. That's Rara's people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that's people. You know what I mean? So that alone was like, leave it alone. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there was a level of respect where you just knew that's someone's cousin, but the person whose cousin it is, that's leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now, a lot of these youths are on like, so. Yeah, but they're older. And now you got to look at it. Most of the olders now are nitties, innit? Yeah, man. They all, like they all yeah, fell yeah, off. Yeah, they're all done, bro. Stressed. And, and now, so, now the youngsters have got no one to aspire to mm, in a good way. But what happens there as well is like the issue that we have now is that where the parents and the dads are not pulling their roles and not doing what they're supposed to do with our kids' lives, they don't have no respect for men. Their, for, their, for their dads. Yeah. Which means they ain't got no respect for men, full stop. Yeah. So I say to the, like, you can't expect a you on the road to have respect for me. You don't even respect, respect your own dad. Mm. So how are you going to respect me if you don't even respect your own dad? In all fairness, though, I've had, I've had, I've had more than handfuls. I've had loads of kids. No, yeah? don't Lo- get me wrong. I, I had a conversation what, and, and I get it. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, mm. right. what I'm saying is, no. This, what, this is something that's come from loads of kids to me, mm. yeah? I wish my dad was like you. Well, I get that all the time. Yeah? I wish I, my dad could listen like you. I wish yeah. my dad could give me the advice. Actually, but the difference between me and their dad is, yeah, their dads most probably ain't lived our life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard for them to sort of empathise with mm. the outcomes of their journey. They just think shock. Mm. So they react with shock. Mm. What are you doing? Mm. Oh, mm. You can't do it all. Oh. Whereas we're like, bruv, you know what's going to happen here, didn't you? Like, yeah. this is what's going to happen. That's going to happen. And then boom, 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 boom. And that's what it's going to be for at least 10, 15 years. Until someone else gets banged up or someone else gets killed, it's going to be like this. So it don't make sense. Like, think of doing things with a different strategy, a different purpose. You've you, you got to look at mine. For me, it's all about leaving a legacy. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I came out of doing the stupidness on the roles, even moving with certain people. I've made 10 movies. I'm the only British artist that got signed to Wu Tang as a rapper years ago. I was out in America rapping. I've now made 10 films. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is all self talk because I didn't want to be that person that just died with no legacy. Like, do you know what I'm saying? If anything, mm. God, God, God forbid, happens to me today, my children can be like, I want to be proud. Do you know what I'm saying? That's for me. Mine's about leaving the legacy so my kids can be proud. Just, when I think about the struggles my mum went through when she came from Nigeria and my dad, it's like, what, do you go through all those struggles for nothing? Mm. Do you know what I've realised as well, yeah? Is the mindset of sort of Africans mm. and the mindset of Jamaicans, mm. right? And the the sort of the driving force behind it's it's kind of like from my perspective, I can't talk for anybody else, but from my perspective, I looked at it like the the Yardies mindset was to dominate and get, mm. get, take, bad, do the look, where the Africans was to nurture, build and grow. Mm. They've always wanted to do things slightly different. And when I was growing up, no disrespect, Fred, but the African kids used to have the piss taken out of them. Bro, I used to get rinsed. I don't like that. Oh, no. I used to get rid. I used to get called uh, boo-boo. 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 Yeah. African boo-boo culture. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that had the scars on their face when yeah. I wear you, you added that marks on this face. Yeah. Dry skin, dry lip. Yeah. I used to get rid. I know, I know, but I know, Now I know. it's cool to be African. Yeah. Now you got Jamaicans and Americans going to Africa. Yeah. Like it's whereas before people wouldn't go. Not everyone. Yeah. Like not everyone like <laughs> you got Jamaicans. You even got white people thinking they're African. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? So now. It's actually cool to be African, but I remember I used to get rinsed. I can imagine. I, 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 I used to rinse Africans myself. Everyone did. Everyone it was just, did. It was, it was just one of them things like, yeah. we talk about a little boo-boo, man. Yeah, Fuck yeah, off. Yeah, what are you yeah, chatting yeah, about? Yeah. We're trying to go, feed your yard, feed your yard. Oh. Like, bro, let me tell you how bad it was. It was so bad that I didn't want to be African. I started pretending I was Jamaican. I used to cut my hair like a Jamaican, like Shabba, yeah. put the patterns in my hair, wear the yardy clothes, and I started chatting on sound systems with a Jamaican accent yeah. so that... I wouldn't be African because they used to get ruined so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny how we go through these things and it traumatises you. And now I look back at it, some of my best friends are the same ones that used to cuss me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's funny. It's, it's reflective psychology, reflective mindsets. It's just 
projecting onto you what mm. they feel about themselves. It's just, I am not what you say I am, mm. you are what you say I am. And mm. that was the news. That, 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 this is the thing, because when I've had to look back retrospectively of all the people I've had to have a go at, mm. I've actually screamed at them, but it's me. It's a, it's a reflection of It's yourself. me, you lazy cunt, yeah. you stupid little <laughs> cunt. How the fuck? But it's, it's my laziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me being the lazy one that hasn't allowed things to develop properly or mm. correctly because I've been lazy and I wanted to cut corners. And because it's fucked up, I'm blaming you mm. because I can. Yeah, yeah, so it's, that, easy. it's easy. It's way easy, out. yeah. So. You know, I do want to ask you, it's mad. Cause, so, like I said, I was, ca I, I count, I was, ca I tried try to count how many friends and associates I've lost, bro. And it came to 45. 45 of my friends was dead. I've had, I had to hold in man's stomach when it opened up and man's face get lick off next to me and all kinds of stuff, right? And when my mum died, I went to counselling for my mum because it was like, before that time, I didn't want to cry. I never used to cry. Mm. They never seen me cry. And then when my mum was ill, she had the dementia, I was like, please cry. Because if I can't cry when my mum dies, when, like, what kind of, I'm definitely a monster. In my mm. head, I was thinking, they, they gave you that name, the crew got the whole thing. People look at you a certain way. If you can't cry when your mum dies, then you really are what people perceive you to be. So when my mum died, I actually was crying. I was in bits and I was so happy that I was crying. But what I wanted to ask you is that, how do you, how do you deal with all the trauma that we see? Like, do you know what I mean? How have you managed to deal with all the trauma? Because it goes somewhere. See, it must go somewhere. Me, I punish myself. It's mad, isn't it? Mm. Like, I've been every, I've been stabbed 23 times. I've been stabbed, I've got a scar on every major part of my body, but I've got scars on every, every limb. I've, I've lost one testicle. I got shot in my penis. It went down my penis and shot my right testicle out. I've been stabbed in both my, both my legs, ankles, thighs. I've been stabbed in both my lungs. I've been stabbed in my throat, been stabbed in my eye. I've been shot in my eye, been stabbed in the eye, been cut in the eye. Um, I've been knuckle dusted. I've been, I've been I've, I've, everything I've ever done has happened to me, right? And I believe that because I've learned now, and this is this is all cancelling stuff that I'm talking now, right? So I learned that everything I'd done when I was a kid was done whilst I was in the limbic system of my brain, right? Now the human part of our brain is called the frontal lobe. And this is the reason that tells you, look, don't do that, you're going to go to prison. But the limbic system says, no, shut up, man, you need the money. Mm. Yeah, but I don't want to go to prison. Well, you're a fucking pussy. We're all right. We're good. Do the thing. And we do the thing, right? But that frontal lobe is the voice that I should have listened to my whole life. But I spent my whole life in my limbic system. And how I can relate to that was because once I become accustomed, because I never knew, because... Everyone says I'm a nah, and everyone says I was sick, and everyone says I was a lunatic, because I'm, I've been known to actually hurt, stab, and it's been alleged that I've shot some of my friends, right? Now, in my head at the time, they wasn't my friends yeah, yeah, because yeah. of what they'd done. Mm. Like, they let me down, or they spoke badly about me, or they'd done something, or they never paid and, like, Hold on, when I've got money for you, I'll pay you. When I've got things for you, I'll do this. When I've got, well, I'm your pal, why haven't you done it for me? You're a fucking Libby, you can't be my pal. Then I would react to okay, that. Okay, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So sometimes, like, I'd be out, we'd be out, say, in a club, and you go, I shut up, you little pussy. And I'd think, wow, what? Why do you say that in front of me? Why do you say that in front of everyone? Right? Comes in but then I think, why does it? Why well, he thinks, well, I'll tell you what. So I'd go off, I'd get all my gear, put it away where I'm putting it, yeah? And I'd just come back and serve him up. And people say, what are you doing? I don't fucking think I'm a pussy. I'll see you later and I'm gone. So people say, well, I'm not having just done him for nothing. But they don't know, they don't know where it came from. Yeah, because it's the limbic system, yeah, right? Yeah. So now, the limbic system, and then, and then obviously, I every, every, every single time I'd done something to somebody, no matter who it was, right? Mm. And this is a fact, no matter who it was, Every single time I done something to someone with a weapon, yeah, after I felt guilty, I felt terrible, I thought, do you know what, they didn't deserve it, that was out of order. And then my limbic system would kick back in and say, you know what, fuck them. It was their life, they chose it, it's the rules. That's the rules, that's how it is. And then that was my justification, that's how I lived with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, okay, they chose this life, and if it happened to me, I'd live with it, so fuck it, it's just that life. So I always put it down to that life. So if you choose that life, 
and you choose to live that life correctly, you have to own it. then you have to own that. You have to own and you have to take every stabbing, every cutting, every shooting, every time a bird leaves you and sleeps with someone else, take that shit. Because yeah. you can't expect your missus to sit on the road for mm -hmm. two, three, four, five years waiting for you to come out so you can go and press someone else. Yeah. For what? Yeah, I'm saying? So the madness in the mindset that we had growing up is lunacy. Barbaric insanity, and I, I'll do nothing but ostracize myself from it, but condone it in no way, shape, or form. Because you do not need, you do not need, especially in today's times, you don't need to break the law. You don't need to break the law. We're brainy enough and sensible enough. Now, look, you started way back when where I started, right? We started in the same place, in same mold, right? Same shoes. Same journey, different place. Facts. And that same journey, same road, same movement, it's a different place. We amalgamated because my closest friends growing up became your closest mm -hmm. friends growing up, right? Mm -hmm. And we all made different choices. But today, today, after that dark journey of transition, where are you today, Freddie? Oh, we're back, man. I'm doing my thing. We're back in it. So we're tell my viewers what it is what is you do. You know what? It's mad. Before, but before I do that, though, I'm, I commend you, bro. I'm not leaving here without commending you, bruv. Fuck it. You know what I mean? No, bruv, fuck it. I'm not, bro, I'm not leaving here without commending you, bruv. Hold on, bro. bro. Like, real talk, bro. Like, the journey, listen, the journey this guy's had, right? As he said, we've come from the same place, and maybe we haven't linked when we're supposed to have linked, but we've come from the same place. And I've been watching his journey, been watching my journey, I've been hearing his name, he was hearing my name, and we see what each other's going. So, the journey you've made, and I've seen where you come from to where you are now, to what he is doing now, what you are doing now, the way you are inspiring people, the way you are changing lives, the way that I look at you and think to myself, I would look at you and think, fuck, if Marv can change and be an inspiration to people, I don't have no excuse. Boom. I have no excuse. None of you, none of you have any excuse. When you hear stories, right, of people that have been near death experiences and they're still not bitter. People that have had nothing but rebuilt themselves. People that have had everything and lost it and rebuilt themselves. How can you have an excuse? How? 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 No, real talk, my brother. I know that. Do you know what I'm saying? Come you, on. You got, when, when you see certain things, you got to say to yourself, fucking hell, like, if my man went through this, 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 and this, done that, 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 and that, and I only went through this, and I'm making excuses for myself, but he's not, fuck it, you better come better. So you, you, I'm just saying it. I'm not trying to preach in it, but I'm telling you as it is, no excuses, yeah? No ifs. We don't do ifs. We only do hows and whens. Figure out how you're going to do something and then decide when. We don't do can'ts. We do... We're gonna do it. You don't try to do stuff. You think you think Mark? You, bro, you didn't try to change. <laughs> you didn't try to change. Oh, I had to change. You didn't try. Change. 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 Bro, change. Did, did you try and cross the road? No, you crossed the road. Did I try and pick up my phone? No, I picked it up. So all this fuckery about I'm trying. Don't try. Do. So, but I want to commend you, bro. Like to change, bro. What you've done? Come on. You didn't try. You done it. We have done it. And, and you're inspiring me, man. And this is the madness. This is a mad thing, right? This is the maddest thing ever. I've done it in one split second. Mad. Fact, right? Young Gotten will tell you, yeah? Um, Buzzwell, he will tell you. I called him up, I said, we've got to come off the road now. Now. I can't do this no more, yeah? This can't happen. We're going to come off the road today. And I'll forget everything you've done, everything you are. We'll come off the road today. And he said to me, what am I going to do? I said, come gym with me for six months. Come gym with me for six months, and I'll guarantee you something can happen. He went and come gym for six months. He ended up getting a job. Then he wobbled a little bit. He says to me, I like the work thing. And I said, mate, just stick out. It. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And then he decided to get into the music. And then Ambush was getting released. And then things got put in place for Ambush. And then they put the music in, um, platform together. And now they're all gone clear. They're all gone clear. And they're making moves. They're making moves in the right direction. And they're doing the right thing. And I'm inspired to see them continue on their journey. Yeah? And... It was done in a day, yeah? Mm. I walked away from every penny I earned. I walked away from penny I was owed. I walked away from all the products I could get. Now, I could get any amount of products any day of the week. I could still get it now. Mm. 
but I choose not to. Why? Because I ain't going back to prison out of choice. Yeah, and what I'm doing, yeah, I'm slowly building myself an empire to leave my legacy so my kids can be proud and they can be free and they can have a life. Do you understand, Freddie? Well, they can have a life, bruv. Well, you know what I'm here, bro. Bro, you got my support. Fully. And likewise, oh, man, come on. You know what I mean? there, come on, my brother. On. Family you know days, you know that. It's family, do you know what I'm saying? It's like it's about leaving a legacy. It's about my kids being able to hear your story. Like, my son, he messaged me today. I can show the message. He's like, Dad, I was watching you and Marv's live last night. He said, oh, my days, Dad. <laughs> and he's inspired. So for me, anyone that inspires my children, He's a friend for life. Yeah, come on. Do you know what I'm saying? But like, like, we've been there for life. Mm. Yeah. The only thing that hasn't been there is the personal connection. Mm. But now, like, right, right, just think of it like this. Just imagine, yeah, if we'd have linked up 30 years ago. Right? <laughs> 30 years ago. Now, the only reason I stopped having it with the people you was you grew with was because they weren't growing fast enough. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean you're not robbing security vans? Come on, we got to rob security vans, bruv. And they're like, bruv, you know what? We're going to do this, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And they went on a different journey. So if we'd have linked back then, we would have just grown with the nasty mindset yeah. of not... Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I would have been like, what? 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 You're going to do that? Come, come, let's yeah. do this. Because yeah, yeah. I was just all about that life, oh, that, 100%, yeah. Yeah? yeah? And it was dirt, dirty, grimy. It was just dirt friendly. Like, mm -hmm. dirt was our friend. Like, that was it. Yeah, it was, funny. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It was, I never left my ass any day of the week without a five or seven year sentence on me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That was my best, my blade, my gas, my ammonia, and my strap. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes two straps, depending on where I was going. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That is crazy. And what I'm saying to you is the mindset is all that differentiates success to failure. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just the mindset. So now the mindset is pure, real, honest, and driven. I can't see anything but great legacies being built. Like they say, every great empire started with a crime. Do you know what I'm saying to you? And Come on, man. These empires, I want my great great grandkids to turn around one day and say, Where did all this start? Go back and think, Fuck, look at granddad. Yeah, look at yeah. great granddad Herbert. Yeah. Look what he done. <laughs> no, but then they're going to see where yeah, they yeah, get yeah. Their, they get their, their driving force from, their yeah. confidence from, their, they get everything. And they think, Wow, that's why. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Come on, because even the British Empire. Yeah, they all started with crime. It all started with, started all started with, with crime. Yeah, robbing, 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 come on, man, robbing and pillaging and raping, bruv. That's what every empire started with. And now we started the same way without the rape. Do you know what I'm saying? So come on, man. And now we've just done it through hard work, determination, commitment, drive, passion. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And belief. Like, I believed I was going to make something for myself. And I did believe that I was going to be the baddest villain on the planet. Yeah, I might not have been the baddest villain on the planet, but I was the baddest villain in my environment. You definitely came close. And I weren't scared. Like everyone knows me, I'm not gassing like I'm, I'm this and that. But I weren't scared to die. I weren't scared to inflict. I weren't scared to have things done to me. So, the fear factor never entered my mind. It was just all about the results and the success. And as long as I was getting that prize, I was good. And if you weren't getting that surprise, then you were weak. And I would just had a sick mindset. So. Although I made it to the pinnacle of the criminal fraternity, it was not worth it. The slogan, for what? For what? For what? Risk your liberty every day of your life for a price you can't put your finger on. You're prepared to stab, shoot, and kill. For what? Yeah, it's my, it's my. For what? Right, now, I've been legit for six years, right? And I've turned over a couple of million quid, right? Facts. And now, obviously, COVID's kicked in. It's kicked me out of the bollocks. I've got my pants pulled down. I've got peeled for 110 grand and I've been sent back to basics, right? But the basics I've been sent back to, I've got a 70 grand car. I'm living in a luxurious house, yeah? I'm not starving. I'm a nice. Do you understand? And I'm broke. But I'm straight. I'm legit. I'm not going to prison. Sleep. You can sleep and not have to worry about fucking police. And watch this. Watch this. I had a hundred and... It was, it was 180 grand or 210,000 pound debt. That's what I just had. Why? Right? What was I going to do? Nothing. Why? Because I liquidated my company, debt's gone. Do have I got to pay? Not a soul on the planet. I'm not blacklisted, I'm not CCJ'd, I just liquidated my company and I've started again. Now we're the Marvin Herbert Limited, moving forward to help all you youngsters aspire to be everything you want to become without crime. Yeah, so we got training, we got employment. 
We've got education. We've got sports, boxing, football. We've got everything to movies, offer you guys. So movies, movies, media, films, everything. TV, trust yeah? Me. So now, now we're going to go back to that question. Tell my viewers, Freddie, oh, why I don't know. Okay, well, come on. Know. So look, guys, look, this is what it is, right? I'm an, I'm, I'm an award-winning writer, director, film producer. I've got 10 movies under my belt now. Um, you might have seen me in Dead Man Running with 50 Cent, Batman, uh, Nintendo, Bulletproof. I don't even want to name drop, but what I'm going to say is like, my thing is about legacy building, right? And I want to help you guys. Like, people always say, youths come off the road, don't do this, don't do that. But my philosophy is this. It's easy for a man to tell the next man to come off the street if you're not going to offer them something or give them a reason to come off the street. So what I want to do is give you guys reasons to stop doing some of the shit that you're doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Get at me, man. Get at Marv. Let's, let's do some films. Let's do some shows. Let's do some TV. Let's do something, can it? If you've got an, 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 an aspiration to be an actor or you want to be in a movie or you want to be a director or you want to be a writer, let us help you. Let's help you. And how you do that, how you do that, I've got a team, and what we'll do, we'll set up the, it's like a, a recruitment company, right? Mm. So you'll be the film and media part of it. Mm -hmm. So Chris at so much front dot com. Text him your details, text him what you're prepared to do, what you want to do, and we'll go through all the bits and pieces and we'll compartmentalise everybody because we're action. Yeah, the infrastructure takes care of all the business and then you'll get filtered through and you'll get your position. Facts. So email chris at so much front dot com if you want to become a producer, a writer, an actor or play a part in anything to do with music and music and media and film. Right. And that's a fact. And that's what we can guarantee right now. Yeah, because I've got the training. He's got the employment. Freddie's got the employment. We've got the movies coming. He's wrote. A world of things like, the, what, you're going to see the trailers, right? Because we've got, throughout this podcast, you're going to see trailers going up. So I'm going to put a few of his trailers up so you can see what he's doing and what's coming and what you can be involved in, yeah? So we help each other grow exponentially. That's what we do. We work together as a team and we create legacies and we eradicate crime in our culture. We've been living in crime for what? For what? Where are we? We've been committing crime for how long? And where are we? Yeah, so that's about doing things so we can grow and come out of this dark hole, this piss hole place that we've been living in comfortably for too long. Yeah, Marvin Herbert tell you that, alongside Freddy Krueger. We'll tell you that. So, come on, come family on. for life. Come family. on, man, you know that, man. It's daunting business. Come on, man. And that's the reality of the road now. Where people that have lived it, breathed it, slept it, committed it, and fucking made it. Like, most of the mindsets on the road right now is a ripple effect of the behaviour that we dispelled. Like, and these kids, they're not doing the stuff that we were doing to survive, to just get through. Like, you're not being attacked, like, by your own environment. Like, we were black and we weren't accepted. Like, we weren't allowed to walk in pubs and bars. We weren't allowed to sit in cafes like you lot. We weren't allowed to be... And the police was allowed to call us a nigger and fuck us up, yeah? Kill us in the police station. A man of people we know they're dead in the police station. And fuck all happened. Yeah, nothing. There ain't no investigation. Ain't no, look, at, look at the tribunals of all the black people that are being killed in this country. Nothing. No one's got no damages. Who's been given damages? No one. Why people break their arm, they get damages. Yeah? They get cut, they get damages. Black people don't get no criminal compensation. Why people get shot, yeah, they get a world of money. Black people get shot, they get nothing. Like, trust me, yeah? It's fucked. So people like Freddie and I and other people that we're amalgamating with, we've got Stephen Graham, we've got United Borders, we've got the AP Foundation, um, we've got Road Light. I mean, these are organisations that are doing, striving and building infrastructures to help all you youngsters come off the road and not make excuses to become successful. Because we're living proof, bruv, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're, my brothers and sisters, we're living proof that you can change, you can achieve and you can become something amazing. Award-winning TV and movie, Freddy Krueger. And if you don't know Freddy, then get to know. Do some research about Freddy back in the day. Google Freddy back in the day. <laughs> Freddy and Marvin Urban. You see, we were bad people, done some bad things. And if we can change our life around, and nothing you, you can do, nothing you can't do, and no excuses. Don't come and no chat about yeah, but 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 butts for the hole at the bottom of your back. Remember that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I say no, but for the whole the bottom of your back, bro. <laughs> I love that. Mm. I love that.
The only thing that comes out to hold the bottom of your back is shit. shit. So butt is shit, bro. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> if you want to give my yeah. viewers your socials. So guys, if you want to follow me, it's very simple. My website, www.freddynawaka.co.uk. It's a Freddy, F-R-E-D-I, not two Ds, D-Y, F-R-E-D-I, nawaka.co.uk. You can follow me on Instagram, the real Freddy Nawaka, Twitter, real Freddy Nawaka. Failing that, Google me. <laughs> yeah, we like that. So that's it. Another exceptional episode of Nothing But The Truth with Marvin Herbert. And do you know what? It's one of the ones I could just sit here talking all night. Well, I don't even know how long we've been yeah, already. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it's just, what? it's crazy, yeah? But like you said, we've got to get Steve on. We've got to get a couple of other members on. And we've got to do a group co- um, podcast round where... Round table. Yeah, round, round, ta- table, round table. Shit. Chat, round table. And, and stories. Oh, do you know-